Yes, I'm in the middle of a show. Okay? <laughs> not really, not a good time. I, I don't want to cold call. Why would, why would you cold call me in the middle of a show without even texting me? For, what do you mean I can't get a text on this phone? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a telegraph? You could just tap, 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 and you could just be like... <laughs> Come on, just like... Okay, fine, 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 fine. I'll tell them. I'll tell them. So the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell in some fucking long time ago. <laughs> and generally has been regarded by like everybody as a bad, bad move. <laughs> but without that I wouldn't be here in front of you today playing on these telephones. And so my name is Matt. I'm doing some weird telephone stuff. <laughs> Hope you've caught on to that by now. <laughs> yeah, so I figured I would give you a little history lesson before we continue in our strange little... What? <laughs> what? No, 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 no. I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> I, I found that on a backwater website online. I don't think I, I, I don't really think that I should doubt myself of like knowing where to find that information. Whatever. <laughs> so hey, downtown Bellingham. If you ever been walking around, it's like out there. Um, there's this place called the Co-op. You go get food. And they, like, I don't know. They got some stuff there. But across the street <laughs> from that building, big brick building, big bunch of antennas on top, so on and so forth. That building is potentially home to what is known as the number five ESS electronic switching system. <laughs> the last computerized telephone switch produced by Western Electric, a part of the Bell system, who used to own everything telephone prior to 1983. They were a regulated government monopoly in which you didn't purchase a telephone from them. Rather, you purchased telephone service and they provided you a wonderful telephone from this array of telephones you can see in front of you and charge you every single month for the privilege of using that telephone to use their service. After the Bell system was broken up in 1983 by antitrust regulations, Judge Green, they started selling these phones. And the story of the Bell system went by the wayside. People that, a lot of people don't even know today that you didn't used to own a telephone. It was just an implement that you rented from a company to use their service. One of the side effects of this fact, though, is that these telephones, as you can see, they're still in working order. These telephones, some of them are 40, 50, 60, more years old, and they still work. The idea was you didn't buy a disposable piece of technology every couple of years just to throw it in the trash when the thing stopped working. You had an instrument that was designed to, live, to deliver you a service over the course of decades, not days or months or years. And so, these things are built off solid. You can do whatever you want to them and nothing bad will happen. <laughs> it's quality engineering. And a nice side effect is that I can sit here and slap things on this table all that I want and it's not going to damage my set because it's just quality stuff. It's amazing how, how indestructible this stuff is. But, I'm not here to teach you history. I'm here to make weird noises with all this telephone stuff. So I'm going to get back to that. <laughs>
or something fell apart. <laughs> <laughs>
He needs a referral to be seen. He says his doctor is out of town and he can't make phone calls on account of being deaf. I'm just trying to fix this so I can continue experiencing and loving life. She tells him that unfortunately he skipped group six steps and had to go back to the beginning. He shuffled out and everybody waiting in the two different rooms shook their heads and thought to themselves, for Christ's sake, just clean the man's ears out. <laughs> than a duffel bag of car stereos, and the senses are assailed by an armada of lawnmowers, war cries of chattering pistons, and unmuffled exhaust. The mesh in my groin burns with the memory of doing the same yesterday, trying to avoid landlord's $25 fee for long grass. I had to stop thrice to let the pain subside. All the windows are open, so the air can move, but mainly just letting in flies, yellow jackets, to buzz dumbly against all the surfaces like someone blind or drunk. Another lawnmower coughs itself into breathing, and I get out of bed, head for the stair, and I see the bastard running it out the window in the neighbor's yard, probably trying to keep his landlord off his ass as well. I stare at him, considering how easy it'd be to walk back to the gun locker in the closet from right there, through the window. He'd never see who or what or when, just as slug and quiet as the lawnmowers die too. Instead, I continued down the stairs, caught my face in a mirror in passing, stared at that for a long moment. People, 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 a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, ten million, endless. If there was this much of anything else, we'd say, we got a problem. <laughs> Go down to your local box, uh, box store strip, stand at a busy intersection with the broken down panhandlers, and watch, just fucking watch, people sitting in a car at that light. Everybody is sitting at a red light. Of the billions of people on this shit fuck globe, you're, uh, more people than you will probably ever see your whole fucking life are sitting in traffic. <laughs> light duty saga continues. Day by day, each incredibly slow for its own reasons. This day I am stripping faucets for copper and brass. Theoretically easy, simple work. I sit there and take apart the thing. Yet threads are always seized with calcium deposits. And I end the day sore with hands nicked to ribbons. I check each bit with a file and magnet to find what's worth a shit. And one discovers the newer the faucet, less brass, more pot metal. And while I'm working, I'm imagining a paper on the decline of civilization from the standpoint of plumbing. How fascinating that would be, and how all the profs would tickle their chins reading it. Then I remember that people like me don't write papers that professors read. I pry and file and snip and sort, all while watching my 70-year-old co-worker at the corner of my eye, doing much the same, bitching quietly under breath, I sit there and watch 25 and beat to shit, sick of it, wondering how this man, who's been working twice my lifespan, how he keeps at it. I look out towards the street and imagine being out there without any money earned to burn, realizing the obvious. Covered in a thin grime and sickly sweet where sweat has dried to sticky memories of being worn out and sawed low. Tore a shed down today. That was black good earth 
fat spiders and roots strewn around, strewn around like scrap phone line. It made me want to stop and watch it become what it would be. And if asked to leave, I'd explain I had to know what the seed I'd seen sowed had to grow. Purgatory wash. Muggy gray day. Hot and clammy all at once. We are but amorphous gelatins moving in it, going place to place, absorbing heavy things in our orange and red and blue forms, letting them hang motionless in a living room for a still life moment. Then move with it elsewhere and leave it, leaving in our wake ooze and soot, accompanied a metallic taste, cherries. Well, that was the weekend. Not bad. A bang up time or whatever. But that just leaves Monday morning dread. And I slide by a perfectly empty Sunday night in a passenger seat, watching the free people seize what's theirs. The bums in the best perches under awnings and fluorescence. One fella in particular keeping pace down a hill on a skateboard, real low, hugging, almost hugging asphalt, cool night air blowing beard and hair asunder, eyes gleaming and a tooth. Devil may give fuck all with a mad smirk. And me now going to bed, salivating to be him. <laughs> Living in regret of tomorrow. Out res way, hauling a shed, drawn and quartered on the flatbed. Corners exceeding the edge of bed dangerously, like a ten penny bear claw. I ride the shoulder on winding country roads. Oncoming cars pass unharmed. Diesel chugs happily. We melt our brains. Sugar, battered woman, destitute, victim, perp, a pejorative smorgasbord. She walks haltingly, soaked with a hundred cars blow by, muddy. Her hair streaked damp across her face, dark rings her eyes. She was terrifying, her expression horrifying, phantom, a sickness of spirit. Unsurprising, really, as we've learned, this world is no place for spirits. this inevitable alien law. And now we contend with the end of most things. And we call that all. Think of that has no hurry, no motive, no need for us. and filthy in the bathroom, and I finally attained a dad cock. All bulbous, <laughs> hairy, and far darker than pale thighs. Yeah. <laughs> Grotesque in dangling flaccidity, an off-cut of meat framed in hernia scars, and a small right nut like a boiled egg wrapped in velvet. I could see my father's sinew and pus haunting my frame. Remembering how at roughly the same age, he and I both met the aperture of a rifle scope 
with furled brow and bled the same red on that brown prairie, dripping down the same cheek, shouting the same shrubness.